is Marlon and Lynn Yost. Stephen Clark, Marlon and Lynn Yost, I know we'll all want to be here. In just a very few minutes, I will be saying the words on the night in which he was betrayed. Familiar words from our communion liturgy. Familiar words. And they're there for a reason. We quote them from the scriptures for a reason. Quoting them from the Gospels, quoting them from Paul's writings. On the night in which he was betrayed. It was on that night, that night which was the festival of Passover. Passover, the remembrance of when God had, by the Spirit, moved over the land of Egypt and delivered the people out of bondage and slavery through the Red Sea, through the Reed Sea, into freedom. Into freedom. It was on that night that God told the people, bake some bread, you will be going in a hurry, so don't put the yeast in. Bake some bread, take something with to eat as you go on your trip of liberation as I guide you into freedom. So the bread, a reminder of Passover, a reminder of every time we eat, we have that, we have bread, we, we recall the liberation that God gives to us. So on that Passover evening, Jesus had bread before him. There was also wine, the cup of celebration for the liberation of God's people. On that night of Passover, now God had rescued the people from slavery, brought them into freedom. And when they were in freedom, where were they? They were in the wilderness. In the wilderness, with nothing to eat once they had eaten their bread. So once the bread was finished, where do you go to get food in the wilderness to feed a whole host of people? So the people, as we heard early in read, the whole congregation, it says, complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Sometimes it's too familiar behavior with the people of God. We don't complain to, we complain against, making it personal. Complain that we have nothing to eat. We are hungry. We are starving. Now this is a natural thing for people to do, and you can't eat. We all need to eat. Most of us eat three meals a day, sometimes more, some of us maybe two, but how many days will we go without eating before we begin to complain? So the people of God were doing what, what people do. They were hungry. They cried out for food. And God says to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the people Say to them, I will provide. Think about that aspect of God, our God of love. When people complain to us in our lives, we get irritated. Sometimes we get resentful. We complain back. We get into arguments or we talk about them to others. You know what that person said to me? We get angry when people complain to us or about us. God, however, says, I hear the complaining. I know you have a complaint. I will provide. What a great God of love we have that does not respond as we would, but responds with love and grace. The message to take with us as we seek to be the followers of God, followers of Christ, to Return love when we hear complaints, especially about us. The Lord said, I will provide. 
And in that evening there flew in a host of quail. And in the morning there was the manna, the bread, bread to eat. The needs of the people were supplied by God. They were fed with the bread of God, the bread of life. And so it is when Jesus was speaking to the people that they recalled this to him. They said, we were supplied with bread in the wilderness. Will you give us the bread of life? What signs and wonders are you going to give to us? An interesting question. If we were gospel reading beginning in, in John chapter 6, verse 24, earlier, earlier in, right, in fact, immediately before these passages, we had the story of Jesus feeding the crowd. That was our gospel lesson last week. We had Mark's account of that. Jesus feeding the crowd so that all were fed. Jesus taking care of their physical needs, and they had come out to hear Jesus, and there were day was long. There were no fast food places to go to or anything else. They were hungry. And Jesus, God in Christ, fed them. So now they are asking again, what signs and wonders will you do? And you begin to think, wasn't that enough? Wasn't that enough that Jesus had fed them in that miracle, but now they're asking for more? But indeed, that's very human of us all. And we may have everything that we need in life, and sometimes we have many things we want or things that we don't need, but we like to have possessions anyway. Even if we have everything in life to get by, if we have food, if we have shelter, if we have heat, if we have those things, we need more. And the more that we need, I'm not talking now about material goods, the more that we need is meaning in our lives. That we have meaning. That we're not just like the animals. My dog Shady has shelter. He has food to eat. He has water to drink. So all of his needs are supplied. Like those dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to say that as far as Shady and um, Bear and uh, Allie go on, I'm just forgetting names today. For them, their lives also have meaning. Shady's is to come here and visit with you all during the day and to, and to see you and then to come through security by night. And for Bear and Allie, it is to keep the geese away from this campus. There's meaning to life there. And if you know dogs, you know that they always feel good when they do it. Uh, something that gives them meaning. Well, so much more for us. We need to have something that has worth, dignity, meaning in our lives. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life which gives you meaning. I will fill you with purpose and meaning, first of all, knowing that you are loved by God. Knowing that you are loved by God. You may complain <clears throat> about God. You may complain about things in the world. You may complain about others. You may say, what else are you going to do for us? We may do all of these things, yet God loves and forgives. God says, I, Jesus, speaking for God, says, I will give you all that you need. I will give you meaning, worth, dignity. That meaning, has, so we begin to share in the life of our Savior. We begin to share by feeding people as Jesus said to feed hungry people. As Jesus said that we must clothe the naked and house the homeless and comfort those who mourn. So we are called to do these things in our life as the people of God. It gives us meaning. It gives us meaning. It gives us a reason to live. To not just be animals, but to be the people of God. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. You will never hunger again. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is that ultimate meaning in life that we, that we need to have, to live as God's people. In a very short while, we shall be saying, I'll be saying those words again on the night in which he was betrayed. On the night of that Passover, the remembrance of Passover from death to life, from liberation, from slavery to freedom. So we go into the wilderness of freedom. We are fed for the journey. As the people of Israel were fed by the quail, by the manna, we will be fed by the bread of life. Jesus took the bread and says, this is my body given for you, given for each and every one of you and for everybody who lives for all humanity. Because we are given that bread of life to strengthen us, to nourish us, to give us meaning in our life, to be the people of God. We can then hear the words of Ephesians again. I beg you <clears throat> to lead a life worthy of your calling, worthy of your calling to be God's people. With all humility and gentleness, with patience. It's not always easy, but we can call on God to help us in those times. Sometimes even we hear, we get into fights with fellow residents, we get mad at them, we get angry about them, we get mad at somebody in management, this, that, whatever. To have patience, to be gentle, to have humility. Forbearing one another in love, don't we often need to forbear one another in love? Someone may do something that makes us angry. But we who have been fed with the bread of life then live, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace as God's people. Jesus said, this is my body given for you. We receive and we say amen, and so be it. Help us to be your people of God. And let us always serve you as you have called us to serve. Amen. And the peace of Christ which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and forever.